I'd like to talk about the philosophy of Martin Heidegger, specifically one of his most important and famous concepts, namely the they, or the one, or das Mann in German. Das Mann is a term with no exact English translation, with the closest being they self. To begin, we have to briefly introduce the central concept of Heidegger's being in time, that being the concept of Dasein. Dasein is the being that cares about its being. This means that the very being of Dasein is constituted by care for its being. The essence of Dasein is care. It cares for its own being, and it cares for the inner-worldly beings it encounters. This primordial care that Dasein has for its being and the being of the world is impossible to fully escape, although it can inauthentically flee from itself. It can flee from its very being, which we'll talk about later. Dasein always has to have a minimal level of care for its being and the being of the world because this care is an integral part of its very essence. I was recently reading the Sayings of the Desert Fathers, one of the most important books of Christian monasticism, and I came across a perfect saying by a man named Abba Pomin that encapsulates Heidegger's understanding of Dasein and care. Quote, Even if a man were to make a new heaven and earth, he could not live free of care. Unquote. Because Dasein is the being that cares about its being, Heidegger will say that it always has a primordial understanding of its being that's deeper than mere knowledge or cognition. That is to say, Dasein's understanding of itself, an understanding that's constitutive of its being as the being that understands that it exists, comes before any categorial thinking. The understanding that Dasein possesses is pre-ontological, pre-categorial, i.e. it comes before any actual cognition. This pre-ontological understanding of its being is essential to its very being. Quote, Dasein is an entity which does not just occur among other entities. Rather, it is ontically distinguished by the fact that in its very being, that being is an issue for it. But in that case, this is a constitutive state of Dasein's being, and this implies that Dasein in its being has a relationship towards that being, a relationship which itself is one of being. And this means further that there is some way in which Dasein understands itself in its being, and that to some degree it does so explicitly. It is peculiar to this entity that with and through its being, this being is disclosed to it. Understanding of being is itself a, a definite characteristic of Dasein's being." Unquote. Heidegger will then say that this pre-ontological understanding of its being is part of Dasein's average everydayness. Everydayness is another important concept for Heidegger because he'll claim that Dasein is primarily not in a mode of authentically caring for its being. In fact, even though Dasein always possesses a pre-ontological understanding of its being, for the most part, this being remains concealed. This is precisely why the task of being in time is to provide a thematic or ontological uncovering and analysis of being itself, a task that Heidegger claims philosophy has long since abandoned. Now, once again, even though Dasein is the being that understands that it has being, it typically ignores the question of its being thus concealing it, and this inauthentic mode of indifference Heidegger calls average everydayness. But Dasein's very being is constituted by care for and understanding of this being, yet it conceals and flees from it. This means that in its everydayness, Dasein flees from its very being, it flees from the question that defines its very existence. And now we approach the question of who Dasein is. This is distinct from asking what Dasein is, as we've already answered this question. So, who is Dasein? Well, for Heidegger, we have to answer this question in terms of its average everydayness, because this is who Dasein typically is. It's the mode of being we're typically in. And the answer Heidegger, Heidegger will give is that Dasein, in its everydayness, is the they, or das Mann. So again, who is Dasein? Dasein is the they. It loses its being in the they and becomes other than 
itself. Now, the translation of dasman as the they seems to imply a plural otherness that's simply external to Dasein. However, the closest translation of dasman is actually the, the they self, which means that even if otherness is involved, we can't simply say that the, the they is external to and stands in opposition to Dasein as if Dasein was already fully itself. This is because Dasein loses itself to the they and exists in an inauthentic or fallen mode of being. To provide some context for this, we must take into account the fact that for Heidegger, Dasein is always in a relationship of care with other beings that it encounters in the world. There are two categories of beings, beings unlike Dasein and beings like Dasein, i.e. other humans. Heidegger will argue that in its everydayness, Dasein fails to distinguish itself from others and instead it loses itself to them. In other words, Dasein is usually not a single singularity that has fully taken on the existential task of defining itself as an authentic and free being, but it immerses itself in the masses and becomes one with the crowd. This crowd is the they. But it must be emphasized that the, the they isn't simply an ontic or empirical other, nor is it even the sum total of others. Rather, the they is the impersonal, anonymous, public that Dasein loses itself to. To quote Heidegger, It itself is not. Its being has been taken away by others. Dasein's everyday possibilities of being are for the others to dispose of as they please. These others, moreover, are not definite others. On the contrary, any other can represent them. What is decisive is just that inconspicuous domination by others which has already been taken over unawares from, from Dasein as being with. One belongs to the others oneself and enhances their power. The others whom one thus de designates in order to cover up the fact of one's belonging to them, es essentially oneself, are those who proximally and for the most part are there in everyday being with one another. The who is not this one, not that one, not oneself, not some people, and not the sum of them all. The who is the neuter, the they, or das man. The best example of the they is the word one in the sense of one does not do this. When we say one does not do this, who is this one that's being referred to? It isn't any definite individual, rather it's the they that we identify with. In this particular example, the they provides the social norms for individuals which they passively accept. In this sense, the they disburdens Dasein of the responsibility of defining itself as authentic and free. But because the they is necessarily the same, it lacks distinctness, it flattens everything and blots out individuality. When we are the they, when we flee from our being and become one with the crowd, we do what they want, we travel the way they travel, we cook the way they cook. There's a leveling down of being into averageness. Take the example of cooking with a recipe. A recipe is essentially an, an instruction manual, and essentially all instruction manuals make reference to the they. They're made for the they. A recipe doesn't address us as distinct individuals, but it relies upon standardness. It presupposes that individuals possess a certain degree of sameness in order for the instructions to have universal applicability. To quote an article entitled, Pulling the Normative Threads of Heidegger's Das Mann, For a recipe, Das Mann is the standardly skilled cook, with the standard cooking implements, in a standard kitchen, in a standard cooking situation. Recipes can exist because each of these standards are more or less upheld. Kitchens are generally designed in such and such a way. Supermarkets stock standardized cooking implements, and importantly, we organize the time in our days in order to deliver ourselves over to a standard cooking situation for a given moment of time." Unquote. So you can see how the recipe only functions because we are the they. We are standard. The they determines and stands for what is standard. But now let's consider a situation wherein I'm cooking with a recipe while also writing a script for a video on Heidegger. 
As I'm cooking, I'll have to figure out in what particular way I'll go about my act of writing while in the process of cooking. The point is that the recipe won't tell me how to do this. I'm responsible for figuring it out myself. So you can see how the they functions to relieve Dasein of responsibility of being truly individual, of creating and pursuing its own singular existential project. In the face of the burden of its very being, Dasein possesses an anxiety, one which causes it to inauthentically flee from itself to the safety of the crowd. For Heidegger, the only way to live authentically is to undergo a radical shift in our relationship to and understanding of the they, confronting the anxiety within us in the process. If we don't do this, we don't simply lose our individuality, but we lose our very being to the they.